What's up everyone? Karu here from My Tennis HQ. Hope you guys are doing great. And today we're going to talk about the dreaded junk slow ball. You know, those annoying ones that when you miss, it drives you crazy and you can't stop talking about it after the match. Like, ah, oh, if I only hadn't missed that slow ball, that junk ball, this guy was junking me. Like, what am I doing? Why am I missing the shots? So my goal in this video is to show you a different approach to how to handle those slow junk balls that will make you more effective, make less mistakes and win more points. This video might get a bit long and dense, but I really want to make sure I'm explaining why we're doing the things I'm saying uh, in this video and not just showing like, oh, do this. This is the drill. I, I like to explain why we do certain things from a, a perspective of someone who's played for a long, long time. So stick with me. Uh, again, it might get a bit long, but I, I'm sh I promise it will be worth it. So let's get right to it. So before we do that, I just want to give a shout out to one of our subscribers. As you probably noticed, we have a new set of logos that I personally think they're really dope. I think they're giving the channel a new character, sort of like our, our new 2021 uh, revamping and upgrading the channel. And this subscriber reached out to us, said he would just wanted to help the channel because he really liked the work. He would do it for free. He's super talented and put this together super quickly. And I think he looks amazing. So shout out to Andy. Thank you so much to, for doing this to, for us. We, we really appreciate it. Um, and I hope, you know, our subscribers enjoy this, the new logos that we're going to put in merchandising and, and maybe hats and shirts and things like that. And I think it's going to look really cool. So again, appreciate it, Andy. Uh, the channel looks much, much nicer now. And as always, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Um, it really helps us. And if you're buying anything from Amazon or Tennis Warehouse, uh, we have links below that if you know if you purchase anything and we get a little commission, no cost to you, just helps us helps us out, and we really really appreciate it. So let's learn how to deal with junk. Okay, so there are several junk balls that can be hit to you. There can be moon balls. They can be short balls. They can be you know, just deep balls with no pace. So in this video, I'm going to focus specifically on one that I call the nothing ball. So remember that I'm going to be calling this shot, uh, this ball all the time, the nothing ball. So the nothing ball is the, the shot that your opponent hits to you that comes a very slow pace, but it isn't too short. It lands deep on the court. It still, it, it doesn't allow you to step in the court. It's that shot that obligates you to generate all, all the power because it doesn't come with any weight behind it and it, it is difficult to generate power off that ball. Now the nothing ball is a tricky one and here's why. Tennis is difficult because of what? Because of time pressure, because the ball usually comes fast and you're moving and things are happening quickly. And then So when you see that nothing ball coming towards you and you're like, whoa, this is a slow ball. I have a chance here to be aggressive, to do something with it. Um, and typically, what will you see is players overhitting it a little bit, hitting it, going for a bit too much because th they see that, again, that slow ball coming to them. It's like they're salivating, like, ah, oh, this is my time. But you really need to pay attention to what this nothing ball is doing to you. Is it a ball that is really short? Is it a ball um, that is deep? In this case, we're going to be focusing a little bit more on the deeper shots. This is a normal thing for you to see that slower ball coming towards you and take it as an opportunity to be aggressive. But in reality, this is a very difficult shot to hit a winner, especially for amateurs, because of two things. One, the ball has no weight behind it, so it makes it very difficult for mo most players to generate a lot of power from it. And two, because the ball is moving slowly towards you, that means that your opponent has a lot of time to recover and be in a good position on the court. So it's not easy to just hit a winner off of it because your opponent is in good position. So instead of just going big and going for broke and hitting the ball super hard, when you see the, the nothing ball coming to you, what should you do? So what I want to preach to you is that instead of using the nothing ball to, to hit a winner, you should use it as a setup shot, a shot that you're almost like thinking a step ahead. It's like, okay, there's a slow ball coming to me. I will do something with it in order to get the next ball that I want. So instead of, again, going for broke and hitting a winner, use it to open up the court, create an angle, make your opponent hit a, a difficult, annoying shot. You have the opportunity, because you have time, you have the opportunity to explore his weakness. If you've been playing for a little while, you'll probably know which shot uh, he likes more or less. Explore the weakness or open up the court, create an angle if the ball allows you to, and set up a better shot, a better put away shot afterwards. Okay, 
so I think this point is a great example of what I'm trying to talk about in this video. Let's break it down. So here, point starts, I serve, it hits a ball deep. I start open up the core here. Okay, so right here, as you can see, I stepped into the core, right? He, hit, he gives me a ball where I'm inside the blue and I'm going to be offensive. This is a shot that came with pace. I want to go for it. So what happens next is I go for it, okay? He gives me another shot where I'm in an offensive position again with pace, the court's open, I'm gonna go for it. So I hit the ball a bit harder, put him in a tough position. Okay, so right now, right here, you know, from this slice back here, it's where he's going to give me that no the nothing ball that we're talking about today. So I hit, I went big twice, he gets there, hits a slice. Okay, so let's watch this slowly. You see how this ball comes nice and slow. There's not a lot of pace behind it. And I am still in an offensive position here inside the court, but this ball has nothing on it. He's in a good, he's in a good position on the other side. He sort of recovered from those two hard shots that I hit. So I could hit the ball really hard and just try to go for it from here and maybe hit the winner all the way uh, back here but I don't want to because this is first of all there's wind and I just want to open up the court I want to use this uh, to set up the court um, to set up an, uh, the next shot okay so if you pay attention to where I am on the court right here that allows me to have the angle to go here okay from this position obviously I go there so you know, let's watch it slowly. My decision making here is I'm gonna go angle, okay, good acceleration, angle, and now pay attention to where he's gonna make contact with the ball. Like, look at that, he is far away on the court. And from this position, he can really, I have so much open court right here. See, so much open court. So if he goes down the line, I'll have a back end. If he goes middle, I have a shot that's probably the best shot for him to take my angle away, but if he goes line or if he goes cross, I have a lot of angle to hit, hit a winner. In this case, he decides, as we saw earlier, to go cross court, and then look at how much court I have. I have so much court, he's just sprinting from that side of the court all the way here, but he's just not gonna be able to recover and I just go down the line. Obviously, I took the ball a bit earlier than I think most people would do, it, but just pay attention to where he, he bounced. I mean, it was a really safe shot. <laughs> I have so much space here, see? Like, there's, I'm not going for the line, I'm hitting a winner, a very safe winner, but that's because I use the nothing ball as a setup shot to hit the winner. So if you watch that sequence again in real time, you'll see I go angle, then boom, you're done. Okay, so here's how you can train what I've been talking about in this video. Obviously, there's a million different ways in which you can do it. Someone may be feeding you balls that are slow with depth that you got to create angle or create the right ball. But I always like to, to do it in point situations. So if you have like a buddy that you always play with, maybe this is a more fun way to do it. So all you have to do is, you know, what the person on the other side, so here my friend Alan, uh, feeds me a ball, I will hit to a corner, and from that corner, he's going to try to hit a nothing ball. He's going to hit maybe a slice, maybe a chip, maybe like roll the ball up, and it can go anywhere on the court. It can, he can go middle, he can go to my backhand, he can go to my forehand, and from there, I will make the decision of how can I inflict pain here without going for too much, how can I open up the court, how can I create the right shot to set up my next shot so it's a pretty simple drill and i think you guys are gonna like it okay so what i want you to pay attention to how i use the nothing ball to set up a better ball to then put away or put my opponent in, in a pressure situation just like here i was able to use an angle to then create the opportunity to get to the net see so i go to his forehand he gives me the nothing ball open up the core he leaves it short and i put away very safe winner Pay attention, this is sort of the perfect example. Nothing ball here. I open up the cord. He tries to do that again, but leaves it short. 
and then I pounce, step in, put away. Again, very easy um, winner. Here, kept, kept it. He kept the ball deep there. I wasn't able to fully put away. I could have gone in, but sometimes you're going to get caught um, in a situation where that nothing ball comes and you weren't fully prepared and you can't just force the issue. You have to make sure you get behind the ball, set your feet, and hit a good ball instead of just going for broke just because the ball is slow. And this one I was able to put away because he left the nothing ball a bit bit shorter i stepped in the court and then uh, i was able to put it away but it, it's really it really depends on what the ball is doing you guys heard me say this before it's the ball that decides what you're going to do and not you just because you want to hit a certain shot you need to make sure that the ball that was hit to you allows you to hit that shot or not. Then you have to adjust. And that's a good point. I set it up, open up the court, take the ball early, put it away. Here's an example of going for it on a nothing ball that I, I was a little bit further back, but I had hit a ball that opened the court a bit more, so I went for it isn't necessarily the ball I'm going to hit every single time, but I went for it on that occasion. Here was a, that one was a good example too of earning a shorter ball from hitting a good nothing ball. Um, but, you know, I missed the last, the last shot, which is okay. But I set it up well beforehand. Here again, pay attention. All the, the winners that I hit off the nothing ball are the ones that are short, the ones that allow me to get on the, step in, in, on the court step in the court otherwise um, you have to use that that ball to set yourself up here good that was a that was a really good nothing ball there had nothing on it but I open up the core and again hit the winner see open up the core instead of forcing it taking it too early or trying to do anything too crazy I took my time hit a good stroke with my back and Open the court and then had an easy put away. You don't force the issue if you don't have to. Sometimes you're taking your own time away instead of your opponent's time away, especially in those slow balls. And just so you guys don't claim that, okay, Karu, it, this is easy for you since you've been playing for so long to create those angles, not easy for us amateurs. Here's my friend Alan, who's a good player, but more of an amateur player, doesn't play as often as, as I do, nearly as often as I do. Uh, trying to do the things that I said, creating that the angle and setting himself up um, from the nothing ball for success instead of you know just going for broke all the time. He does have the tendency sometimes of going too big into shots that he shouldn't, and he, he kind of dialed back down a little bit, and he definitely helped his game. So again, same drill. I give him sort of that nothing ball, and he's waiting for the right opportunity to actually put the put it away here it creates a great angle and then boom that's the winner see off that that nothing ball created the angle that was a perfect example open up the court set himself up for success instead of like going for broke just because one ball came slower and that was just a good winner and backed up i was not expecting that that down the line. Again, I gave him the nothing ball. Here, good ball. Open up the court, but that was a safe, it still was a pretty safe shot. You see, he had a lot of shape, had a lot of top spin. Didn't just go at it like crazy. Here, another nothing ball. That's too much. There you go. He called himself out on it. Yeah. There you go. He called himself out on that. That was the perfect thing. He got a bit cocky there. Uh, went for too much instead of just going for a good angle. See, it's uh, it, it is what a lot of amateurs tend to do. You know, make those mistakes, make those bad decisions. Um, it tends to you know hurt you guys in point play instead of thinking too much about you know technique and all those things. You've got to be thinking about how to win points. How can I win points? How can I open up the court? You know, obviously everyone is getting a bit much faster than you know anyone is. It's just, ooh, good ball. Anyone is just much faster. All players are much faster. 
Um, so you see, you gotta use those angles, gotta set up yourself for success and not for failure. And I think once you see this nothing ball next time and you try to open up the court a bit more, then you instead of just going for too much, I think you're gonna you're gonna find a lot more success and win a lot more points.